Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome to, well welcome back I suppose, to Classified France 44. This is the new game published by Team 17 and developed by Absolutely Games, the game development studio, headed by my very good friend James Brooksby, who you may know from such classics as Fractured Space and Strike Suit Zero. And uh, this is his new game, it's coming out on March the 5th, I think it's safe to say, he's absolutely bricking himself at the moment, but I'm sure he's got nothing to worry about. It's a good game. And ahead of the game's release, the publisher, Team 17, sent me a little something. Uh, to support the release of the game, Team 17 have sent me uh, this influencer box, uh, which Akazuki's going to help me open. Um, just the packaging is really, really good. It, it, it looks like an old 1940s-style postal package, complete with French stamps. And postmarks. So sealed with string. I feel kind of bad about cutting this open because it's so well done. Now this is tough. What do you think of this Akazuki? I know it's very exciting. So you're gonna give me a hand? Okay. <laughs> yes, very interesting. So what do you think's in here, little girl? So we'll see at this end as well. I can actually remember. I can actually remember when packages used to look like this. <clears throat> Maybe not exactly like this, I'm not that old. What's that? You want to play with a string? Yes, you can have the string. The string's all yours. So, um, I have absolutely no idea what is inside this. Oh, no. There's even more. Oh, wow. Okay. I know Rita's going to steal this. Um, so first of all, there's a rucksack, well, not really a rucksack, yeah I can't think of the word but yeah, and it comes with dog tags, oh wow, okay, these are actually, these actually have my name on them, <laughs> uh, let's see if I can get these off and give you a closer look. What do you think of that? That's me. No idea what's in this. I, I, I don't even know how I'm supposed to open it. <laughs> oh, here it is. Right. Because I appreciate the help, baby, but um, thank you. <laughs> Never worked with children or animals. Right, let's have a quick look to see if there's anything inside any of the... Oh, there is. A free French patch. So there's that, there's the bag, there's the dog tags, there's a free French patch. There's a, a pencil. Also marked Classified France 44. It's a good job, I'll check the other pockets. This is really good. What do we have inside? So there's a clipping from a newspaper here, uh, the daily sketch, and then on the back something about a V1 rocket site being bombed. Of course these are all missions that you undertake in the game. <laughs> yeah. See this is how we know the world isn't flat, because if it was, cats would have pushed everything off the edge by now. Uh, there's more stuff in here. I'll check that out. Aluminium water bottle. Oh, and more. A mess tin that goes with the water bottle. That's really cool. What is this? Oh, okay. 
Now there's something in there, this a, a can of sardines. There's something in there that's definitely not sardines. And there's a sealed document. We'll check that out. I'm gonna have a look at the oh my god, there's more. Okay, there's uh, a medal, free French medal, which is really cool. There's something here from the War Department of the Ad Adjutant General's Office. Uh, the Resistance Medal. Certificate awarded to the Mighty Jingles, a member of the United States Army, for their dedication and valor during the French Resistance in 1944. So, the stuff just keeps on coming. What else? Wow. There is a lot of stuff in here. There's a couple of postcards. Um, postcards or exhibits. So presumably at some point during the game we're going to have to bomb an aircraft factory. Uh, these all look, these are actually all locations in the game. Various different, they're not quite postcards, they're more sort of uh, photographic exhibits. There's a free French armband. I wonder if I can actually get that on. <laughs> or is it resistance arm? Oh, uh, FFI is free French. Um, this looks like a propaganda poster of some kind. Yep, classified France, every shot counts. And then on the back, the game itself. I believe these are actually based on actual World War II posters. That's not going to stay on. Uh, a field sketchbook. What colour pencil? Oh, it's all art from the game. So uh, these are the sort of things that you get during the cutscenes. Oh, and the rest of the pages are free for you to use. So that's really cool. But what's this? I, I love how they've aged it. It's unmarked. Oh man, there is a lot of stuff in here. Okay, so to begin with, we have, and this is all paper clipped together, special operations intel packages. And these are all the characters that you can uh, play during the game. Each one of them has their own intel document. So there's a whole bunch of those. What is this? <laughs> a two franc note. I presume that's what it is. It says two francs. And then we have a periodic report, classified top secret. Um, and I believe this is describing your first mission. So, and again, I'll give you proper close ups of all of this stuff. And then we have a letter. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I know what this is. So, the letter. My dearest the mighty jingles, I hope this letter finds you well amidst the winds of change that, that, that herald the arrival of spring. Uh, so this is actually... They did say that they were going to give away a couple of uh, codes for the game, but you would have to figure out what the codes were. And that's where this comes in. So if you take the letter and then you place this over the letter. It's revealing. Yeah, <laughs> it's revealing a secret message. And it says, find your game codes on the money. Where did I put the money? It's around here somewhere. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. Oh, right, yes. So there are two steam, co uh, steam keys on the money, uh, which I'll figure out some way of giving away. So two free copies of the game. Uh, and they're both, I mean, they're fairly obvious when you know what you're looking for. Uh, I don't know how I missed it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, find, I'll find some way of giving those away. So two of you can get yourselves a copy of this game as well. And um, I mean, what can I say? Thank you so much to Team 17 for all of this amazing stuff. This, this really has been incredible. And I know Rita is gonna have this in a heartbeat. 
so I may have to hide it from it. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the creator box. Really, really good stuff. Uh, it was really fun opening it all. Oh, one other thing, I didn't open. Let's see what's in here. Oh, oh, that's really cool. So this is um, a map of the area, printed on parachute silk. Wow, can't believe I missed this. That's awesome. And also in the can, this is all the stuff that was rattling around, we got a bunch of challenge coins. So that's, yeah, that one nearly got away. <laughs> that can's gonna come in handy for storage. So yeah, uh, thank you very much to Team 17 for sending all this amazing stuff. And uh, I'm gonna have to think of a way of organizing how to give away two of those codes. So two of you can also have a free copy of the game uh, or when it is released on Steam on the 5th of March. And now, back to the game. So I'm continuing right from where I left off in the first video. There's a link to that in the video description. And it's here where we get some further details on one of the important game systems, morale. Let's go to the base camp. It's important that you actually spend time talking to and listening to your team between missions because this actually increases their morale. And that's very important. I swear, Vincent, it's uncanny the way you sniff out crowds. Are you part hound dog? Is the scent of pink disinfectant and black bread. If you're downwind, you'll pick it up at 200 yards. Jesus, I was just joking. You can really smell them? It's distinctive. Well, so. Sort of sickly, pungent. I'd know it anywhere. My sense of smell was the first casualty of the war. I blame army food. So what this is now done is increased to the maximum morale of the two team members who had that conversation. And morale is very, very important in this game. It's one of the three primary stats along with health and action points. The morale system is one of the things that makes Classified France 44 a little bit different because when you're in combat getting shot at, even if you're not getting hit, it's really scary and it will deplete your morale. And when your morale runs out, very, very bad things happen. Now, this can happen to you, and it can also happen to your enemies. So you should take every opportunity to do anything that's going to increase the morale of your troops. And there are a number of ways that you can do that, not just by having a cosy campfire chat at the base camp. But we'll come on to more of that later. And now we first have to select and prepare for our next mission. There's always a choice of two. You have to pick one or the other. You can't do them both. And doing missions in an area increases the resistance strength in that area, as well as any mission-specific bonuses. If we select the mission in this area, we'll recruit Henri Vittel, who's a criminal, or if we select the mission in this area, we get to recruit a Moroccan Bren gunner, who goes by the name of Sami Alami, and I really like the idea of having a Bren gunner. So we're going to go for this one. Next thing you need to do is select your team members. You can choose up to four, I only have four available, so that's a fairly easy choice. So, recruit the brand gunner, steal a bunch of detonators. There's our man. I'm sure he can help us through this fence to where the detonators are kept. So, first things first, we need to get through this electric fence. Hopefully he can help us with that. You are late. Now stay quiet, there are patrols nearby. I will shut off the electric fence, then you can cut through sounds like a plan so what? I need to select Sammy himself and then go over here to topple the generator off. Yes. While being careful to not get spotted by the Germans. Yes. And with the power of the fence cut off now I can safely cut through without killing myself. Now for the benefit of anybody who hasn't actually seen the first video that I did on this game because it was a while ago and even if you have seen it you might have just forgotten what Classified France 44 is about is organising the French resistance to make life as difficult as possible Moving. for the Germans in the run-up to D-Day. And this is a thing that actually happened. During 1944, Special Operations Executive parachuted a whole bunch of what were called Jedbra teams behind enemy lines deep into occupied France, and they had two objectives, one of which supported the other. One was to inflict as much sabotage 
on German logistics as possible, Easy. and two, organise the French resistance to aid them in getting that done. Because there were a lot of resistance groups in France. But there was very little coordination between any of them. Some of them actively hated each other. And it was the task of the Jedra teams to try to get some sort of coordinated resistance effort going. Which was a lot easier said than done. Because not all of those resistance groups actually wanted to fight the Germans. Now make no mistake, the French resistance did a lot of good and did make a big difference during World War II. A lot of it coordinated from London by daily coded radio broadcasts, but some of it also just done on their own initiative. For example, things like organising the escape routes for downed aircrew in order to smuggle them safely out of France and get them back home, as well as acts of sabotage and defiance. But a lot of what were termed resistance groups were not actually resistance fighters at all. Some of them just consisted of young men who didn't particularly want to be rounded up and sent off to work as forced labour in German factories. Going for a stealth kill here, by the way. He's a ramen. This is an automatic kill. Providing you don't get spotted. Also, you don't have to worry about um, any bodies lying around for enemy troops to discover. Notice at the top of the screen, there's a box that says unaware. This is the state of the enemy forces, so at the moment they are unaware of my presence. Underneath that you can see four boxes, one of which is covered in yellow. This is the ambush meter. Every time you pull off a stealth kill and remain undetected, you get an extra pip added to that box, and when it fully fills up, you can pull an ambush. And what that means, well you basically get a free turn. Um, once that ambush is executed, the German side loses the next turn, so that's really, really good. Back onto the subject of the yeah. French resistance, though, because it is a fascinating subject. As I said, not all of these resistance groups were actually interested in resisting at all. Some just wanted to not get carted off to Germany as forced labour in German factories. Some of them were just gangs of criminals who really didn't want to get arrested and shot or sent to prison. Uh, some were communists. There were actually a lot of communist resistance groups, and some of those communist resistance groups were actually resistance groups, but a lot of them just basically wanted to fight other communist groups. And they weren't really interested in antagonising the Germans and making life even more difficult for themselves. There was a lot of political infighting going on between the various different groups, not just the communists. Um, very little coordination. And this is where the Jedbra teams came in, because they could not only coordinate the activities of the various different resistance cells, but they could also give them supplies organised by airdrops, and this made them very, very popular with the resistance cells who actually wanted to fight the Germans. Of course, it also made them very, very popular with the resistance cells, particularly the communist resistance cells who didn't want to antagonise the Germans and just wanted to stockpile weapons and ammunition so they could defeat their political rivals, establish their own groups as the leader of the French communist resistance and get ready for what they saw was the inevitable revolution that was going to happen once the war was over. Me? At the same time there were a whole bunch of these French communists who were also fervent patriots and absolutely definitely wanted to aid the resistance in doing everything they could uh, to really stick it to the Germans. It was a very complicated and complex situation and the Jedbra teams were dropped right into the middle of it. They did not have an easy task. Second stealth kill, still work. undetected. These, however, are not the only enemies present. I mean, there's three that we know of, but there's an indicator on the other side of that rail car letting me know that while we can't see anybody, we can hear somebody moving around there. I'm gonna try for another stealth kill. And the game will tell you like, for example, if I move there, I will be detected. So let's not do that. Let's move here. This will make a noise, and it will kill the target. This is risky, because the noise may cause one of those sentries to turn around. But I got away with it. Nobody was close enough to hear it, so nobody is suspicious. Hmm? And that's given me three or four pips on the ambush meter. This is why you want to try to stay undetected for as long as humanly possible because it fills up your ambush meter. 
And also, nobody's shooting at you, which is always a good thing. Moving. I've moved up far enough now I see an enemy. that I get a line of sight. Oh, that's not good. So this guy cannot be stealth killed. He deals high morale damage because he's got a machine gun and he can sustain overwatch. I think that means his overwatch cannot be interrupted. That's really, really bad. I do, however, because hey, there's still two of them I'm left here. on this side of the rail yard, have an opportunity to pull off a fourth stealth kill and activate the ambush meter. So we're going to do that. Give us the opportunity to get an ambush off before we get detected. And the timing was fantastic. We've got the element of surprise. Attack! Because we have been detected, and not by the guys on the other side of the Wait. rail cars. This last sentry just turned around What's cooking? and caught sight of us. But because I've just triggered an ambush by getting that fourth stealth kill, Moving out. the entire enemy side have just lost their turn, so I can literally just Here walk my. up to this guy and oh, give him a damn good stabbing without fear of triggering any kind of return attack. Of course, I've now just failed one of the secondary objectives, steal a detonator without being detected, because I've now been detected. Now it's on. I'd really like to get rid of this machine gunner as soon as humanly possible. So we're going to go to the main <laughs> shot. Ah, the sniper, we score yeah. a critical, and that drops him in one hit, which is very welcome. Stellung halten! Augen offen halten! Kontrolliere deinen Bereich! Now then, Overwatch. Target! Sammy, the Bren Gunner, has set up an Overwatch zone. It gives you the choice of triggering the Overwatch shot or not. Obviously, since I'm not detected, I didn't lose anything by doing it. And Sammy, the Bren Gunner, takes down one of the enemy soldiers. But if you were still in stealth while you were setting up Overwatch, you don't necessarily want to shoot because that will give you position away. And the game gives you the choice take the shot and get detected, or hold your fire and remain detected. That guy just lost all of his morale because a grenade went off right next to him. Even though it didn't actually do any damage to him, he is now broken and he basically loses his turn. There is another German soldier who was within the grenade blast radius and it didn't kill him because we can still hear him moving around over there, but he almost certainly also took you want me? damage. There are two stages of morale damage. When your morale gets reduced to below Moving 50%, you become suppressed. And this gives you all kinds of penalties to hit and so on and so forth. I believe that when you're suppressed, any hits upon you are also automatically critical strikes. So getting suppressed is a bad thing. Getting broken is terrible because you effectively lose your turn. Remember, these guys are still ambushed, so they can't do anything. So, I mean, I could just run up and stab this guy, but that would leave me exposed to his friends on the other end of the railway tracks. So instead, I'm just going to take the hit fire Roger. with the Tommy gun. Oh, he's having the last him, fight. And Superb. I'll have you remain behind cover. Now, as for these two because they have both Galata. been broken. Ah, and how'd you like that? Oh. Oh. I was able to get another grenade off through the rail car and take them both out for the price of one grenade. There is another machine gunner on the other side of this railway track. And those guys are bad news, so my sniper takes a shot at him through a very narrow window there with the old the Enfield rifle number four, hits him, doesn't kill him, but reduces his morale below 50%, so he is now suppressed. Moving well. out! Fresh target! Oh crap, another machine gunner. I've got very little I've only got a 23% sure. chance of actually. He's in my sights! Hilfe. And I of course miss. But getting shot at is really scary, so he's now suppressed too. And right on time, here Target comes the reinforcements. Target sighted! And none of them walk into the No, wait, one of them does walk into the Overwatch zone. We got a pin! Flake them! They're the now close. all suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> because suppression doesn't just affect the target you're shooting at. If your shots go close enough to anybody else, they will also suffer morale damage. This whole suppression and morale system works fire! both ways, by the way. I mean, not just for incoming fire, Flag which is obviously really scary, and my boys are getting suppressed. Close one. Fortunately, not actually hit because of the hit penalties imposed upon those two machine gunners uh, due to being suppressed themselves. But you can also inflict morale damage upon yourself. Let's say, for example, you've got 
somebody who is engaged in close combat with a bunch of enemies. If you want to support that gun, oh, he's done oh for. beautiful Snipe. critical hit, took out the machine gunner. If you want to support that guy, it's going to involve firing past him into the enemies that he's engaged with, and bullets whizzing over your shoulder from what Wait. is supposed to be a friendly direction is the sort of thing that puts the wind up your sails as well. You can actually inflict oh, morale what? damage on he's your own like team by giving them covering fire if you're not exceptionally careful. You can also, if your aim isn't good, accidentally hit them. Grenade! <laughs> Enemy down! Très bien! There are ways of recovering morale, of course. Um, officers, for example, get the ability to rally the troops, which restores, at first, I think, 10%. Can confirm. Taking the shot! They suffered us! I'm dry! Gotta points. reload! And it doesn't hurt oh. to actually have high morale to begin with, which is the whole point of Moving out. shooting the breeze with your troops at the campfire between missions. Again, didn't Let's hit go. the machine gun. I got a bead on him! Tracks and completely missed that guy as well, but they were both near misses, and since they were already suppressed, their morale's now down to zero, and they're basically broken, which means uh, those two guys have now basically skipped their next turn. More enemy Let me approach! Straight in the side oh, Overwatch. Target down! Bravo! <laughs> Done dead! Oh! Although he is suppressed in turn. I actually have a secondary objective to suppress two enemies with Sammy, unfortunately he's just really, really good at killing them, which I suppose is a nice problem to have. A couple of the guys have been suppressed and have suffered morale damage, so we're going to use the rally ability to uh, prop their morale back up to full. This suppressed Move guy it. over here looks like he would Enemy. benefit from a damn good stab ah, as well. He's full of lead. Nice kill. Grenade! In the goal! Before they get getroffen! So I'll clear out the rest of the Germans. Attack! Oh, enemy to it! That's a clapper! Grenade! One time! Ah! Il est mort! That's a humdinger! Hey! Hit them some iron! Oh god! Aim it! Oh! Hoser! Yeah! Moving out! Ich werde flankiert! Sie greifen meine Flanke an! Back the blighter! Snipe! I'll take that. Grab the detonators and then make myself scarce before more reinforcements show up. Mission successful. Failed two of the secondaries, I didn't steal a detonator while undetected, and we didn't get to suppress two enemies with Sammy, but well. Three out of five is close enough for government work. So we recruit Sammy, we get a new Thompson gun, and a side cap, an item of clothing. And of course everybody earns some experience. Leveling up and allowing us to spend our first skill point. However, if you think, well, we could have done better, it gives you the opportunity to restart the mission, or just go straight back to the base camp and spend your ill-gotten gains. I am Samia Alami, a Goumier. I was in France at the Armistice, but did not go home. The Germans would jail me if they caught me, so... It is natural that I join the fight against the Bush. Operation Blacklight completed. Sammy recruited. There are three main resistance factions here in the game. The Gaullists, who are basically French patriots, the Radicals, who are basically the Communists, and these guys, the Criminals. And by performing an operation in this region, we've improved the resistance strength in this region. If you get any region strength up to three, you activate that region's special ability. And we've also improved our relationship with the criminals, allowing us to spend the 24 supplies with the criminal quartermaster in this region in order to get new gear and equipment. But we did also get some new gear and equipment as a result of just completing the mission in the first place. Always remember to do a bit of team building between missions, of course, to boost everybody's morale. So, Charles, any good news? No. The chef de group tells me the Fell Gendarmerie have more radio cars. They are getting better at locating our radio. All these calls to London to arrange airdrops. It was a matter of time before they honed in. We should move location again. Willard won't like that. He'll want to set up a trap for the cars and bring an airstrike on them. I don't care what Willard says. 
is getting too comfortable at this camp. Security means we need to move, so we move. So that's boosted the maximum morale of another two of our team members, but there are other things that you can do to boost your team's morale. We've already seen exactly how important morale is in this game, you can never have too much of it. So let's take a look at that side cap that we unlocked as a result of completing the mission to recruit Sammy. A lot of the equipment that you can equip is nationality specific, like this British side cap that we just picked up which increases maximum morale by 4, and Tom King here is a British soldier so he can equip it. But what about Vincent? He's Canadian, British Commonwealth. Can he also equip the British side cap? He can. Just not while Tom's wearing it. Yeah, we didn't unlock the side cap for everybody. We only got one of them. But Vincent can equip that new Tommy gun, which does increased morale damage to replace the one that he was issued. And with the supplies that Bonjour. we earned from completing that mission, it's time to visit team. the region quartermaster, the criminals, who are merely suspicious of us, <laughs> so I guess you've got to start somewhere. Now this Walther PP Compact is a really nice pistol. It's going to cost us 13 supplies, but it's basically better in just about every way than the M1911. If they find British or Americans wearing French colours, they will call you a spy. And that explains why only my French troops are able to wear this hat, which confers a bonus of plus 8% morale damage. There's also this improved M1 carbine as well. I can only afford, with my 44 supplies however, to buy two of the three items of equipment available. But I do really like the improved accuracy on this M1 carbine, so I'm going to I see you purchase share this my good taste. and equip it on Cassidy. Finally, before we embark on our next mission, with 51 days remaining until D-Day, we need to spend our skill points. So, each of your operatives belongs to a certain class. So, for example, Charlie here is a marksman. And his skill points can be split amongst four general areas. Sniper, Defender, Veteran and Huntsman. All with their own perks and abilities. Like the Precision skill, which means that Charlie here is no longer able to hurt or deal morale damage to an ally, which makes him perfect for providing precision support fire to allies engaged in melee with enemies. Basically, you don't care if there are bullets whistling over your shoulder from Charlie because you know he doesn't miss. Sammy, the Bren Gunner that we just recruited, can actually specialise in becoming, well, a tank. Gaining all kinds of abilities that allow him to basically taunt enemies, forcing them to attack him, interrupting any overwatch that they might have laid down and reducing any incoming fire heading his way. All of the classes have their own unique specialisations that you can dive into. And you're going to be needing to take advantage of all of this and more in order to successfully fan the flames of resistance prior to the Allied landings on D-Day. 52 days to go. Not an awful lot of time and a long and difficult road ahead. Classified France 44 will go on sale on Tuesday the 5th of March. It's available on Steam, PlayStation and Xbox. And there are of course multiple editions of the game that you can buy, but don't worry this isn't Bethesda or Electronic Arts. Nobody's going to be asking $200 for the premium edition of the game. In fact the Overlord edition, which is the most expensive version, can be pre-ordered for £50, dollars or euros with the standard edition coming in at only 35. Coming up in the very near future, I'll be doing a follow-up video, much deeper on into the campaign, with a whole bunch of new stuff unlocked to play with. Looking forward to that, hope you are too. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you're excited about the game and looking forward to playing it. And I hope we've all had a fantastic weekend because that's it for today. Join me in the next video where we will continue sticking it to the Bosch. And as always, Take care, and I'll catch you next time.